Hey guys, Chandler here, back my channel, Alternate Journey, and today I'm going to be reacting to some tattoos covering up phalloplasty scars, which is a bottom surgery for trans men and trans masculine individuals. If you are uncomfortable by scars, don't watch this video. That's literally what this video is about. All these uh, posts that I'm going to be reacting to were submitted to the Instagram page, Trans Scar Tattoos. I highly rec recommend that you guys go check them out. They post a lot of tattoos covering up trans scar surgeries, um, mainly focused on trans men, so there's like a lot of top surgery cover-ups and stuff like that. So yeah, definitely go check that out. And I will also be linking down Jay, the admin of this page, his merch, uh, which is this. He only has this one design, but you can choose like t-shirts, sweaters, and stuff like that, M many different colors as well. Um, all the proceeds that he gets from this merch goes towards his transition medical expenses and stuff. So yeah, definitely go support him with that. Before I get into reacting to these tattoos, let me explain what phalloplasty is. Phalloplasty is one of the two main sources for bottom surgery for trans men and trans masculine individuals. So with these surgeries, there are two donor sites that you can choose from. The most common is the forearm to create the actual shaft of the, your penis. It takes the your outer layer of skin, obviously, and the dermis, which the dermis is the inner layer of the two main layers of the skin. The dermis has connective tissue, blood vessels, oil, and sweat glands, nerves, hair follicles, and other structures. They use this in order to form the shaft and make sure it's like sturdy. Typically, if you are going for the donor site of the forearm, they will take the outer layer and the dermis out of the forearm, and then they would take a the outer layer of your thigh and put it on your forearm for it to like heal and kind of look a little bit normal and stuff like that. Obviously you need some outer layer of skin, not just taking the outer layer and the dermis and just leaving it like that where you look literally skin and bone. Or if you do not want a visible scar of your forearm, you can actually get that from each thigh so that you could choose a thigh where they do the outer layer of the skin and the dermis and then the other thigh they'll take the outer layer of skin put on the other donor site. Now I'm going to be showing you guys a few uh, pictures of healed scars of what the typical sizing is. Now again, then again, it, you can actually choose the size of your shaft when you go through this surgery um, through phalloplasty. If you choose meta, you do not get to choose the size. What they go off of is your actual growth from testosterone. They typically do like the average size of a, of a dick for your like height and weight, but you obviously have input of what you want your dick to be, obviously, and what you want it to look like. That's why a lot of these scars are going to be looking different in lengths, uh, just to give you guys input on that. So yeah, here's a healed scarring. Um, obviously, it's going to look a little bit different for everyone because everyone's body heals differently, but also it depends if you actually listen to the doctor, what scar treatment you use, and also how much sun exposure you give your scar. So that's why a lot of these are going to be looking a little bit different. It also depends on how much muscle you have and how much fat you have. That's why a lot of these uh, certain individuals, it looks like they're like really thick and then it looks like just skin and bone, like really definitive of like, wow, something happened to them kind of way, you know what I mean? But yeah, if you like take good care of your scars, don't give them direct sunlight. Like this guy, uh, Seth, this is his thigh donor site uh, one year and a half after surgery. It's extreme gapping because he used his thigh. That was the actual donor site for his shaft. So of course that's gonna be like a little thicker input. You're always gonna have like an actual input in your skin, whether it's the form or thigh that you choose for the main donor site of your shaft. Obviously like your skin's not just gonna redevelop so much dermis and stuff like that. So of course you're gonna be marked for life from this surgery. But that's why a lot of trans individuals get tattoos to cover it up, to help with their dysphoria, and also so they don't get looks from other people. Me personally, I've always wanted to be covered in tattoos and stuff like that. Personally, I like scars, but since a lot of people are becoming more knowledgeable of what trans scars are, I don't like the scars I'm going to have to get because of my surgeries and stuff like that. So, yes, I will be getting tattoos to cover up my scars once I am healed from those surgeries and stuff like that. I know a lot of you guys don't want to be listening to like what actual surgeries are, uh, depending on like your actual knowledge of the surgeries and stuff like that. So, yeah, let's get right into the tattoos. Little disclaimer, these are just my opinions. Obviously, these individuals are proud of their tattoos since they submitted it 
to this page for a shout out and like it covers up this scar so obviously it means a lot to that individual this is just my critique of some tattoos and also to just show you guys for inspiration for your scar uh, cover ups as well yeah just want to say that out there I'm not hating on anyone's tattoos alright first one okay I like this one there's like a little critique that I could give it where it's like I don't know how old it is though that's the thing it looks like a pretty old tattoo but I don't know if that's just because the scarring is making it look old but in the end it will age well if you wanted it the old time look you know what I mean I just don't know what to say with this one because it's something that I would never get um it looks good it looks clean covers up the scar it does its job and stuff like that but yeah I just don't personally like these tattoos it's just with that much area of skin like you're really just gonna cover it up with just like blocks of black and lines, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, it's just, maybe because, like, I'm just a person that, like, wants to be covered in tattoos, but, like, so many different tattoos, like, I don't want to block off a large area just for, like, a blackout tattoo, you know what I mean? Oh, it's a phoenix. His healed really nicely, too. That's the thing, with certain individuals, um, you won't actually be, uh, getting hair in that area of skin as well, because obviously the dermis has hair follicles. Yes, the outer layer of your thigh for the donor site of going onto your arm, has hair. So it depends on the healing process. It depends on your body, how it heals, and how much your skin accepts the outer layer function of the thigh skin to your forearm. Everyone's body is a little bit differently, so it's like that's why some individuals, yes, they get hair back in the donor site. Some individuals, they don't. It looks like for him, unfortunately, or fortunately, it didn't. But that's why a lot of people also get tattoos and stuff like that, because you won't actually notice too much hair on the actual tattoo, and certain individuals that have a lot of tattoos, they actually shave it, so you can actually see the detail of their tattoos. Just saying. I like this one. I like, kind of like in the traditional style. It's nice, like that was my first tattoo, um, a traditional, just, uh, flash sail fish that's on my ankle, and I love him, he's great. The proportion's a little bit off for me, I would like the head a little bit bigger, but also it's like a little bit confusing. Like the actual detail function of the phoenix, and then like there's a flower, but then there's random feathers in the back. Like I like it, but like when I examine it, I start to not like it. <laughs> I'm a very particular guy when it comes to proportions with any type of animal on anyone's skin. Like, I want it to be completely proportionate of what the actual animal looks like and stuff. But all in all, I like it. I like the color that he chose and stuff like that because it really matches with his, like, the scar skin tone. It completely covers up the scar, so it did its job. Whoa, wait a minute. This one is good. Because as you can see from his donor site area, the scars really did not want to heal. It depends on how much treatment he actually gave them, or just his body in general. A lot of people, this scars doesn't heal that well. But I love the design that he chose to cover up this donor site, because it literally, it blends in perfectly. Like, there's no other tattoo that I would think of to completely cover that. Like, you would just have to do either blackout. But, like, the whole nature scene with the rocks and, like, the waterfall, that was a perfect design to cover up this tattoo. The only critique that I have is that it looks like it's kind of like a watercolor um, kind of tattoo method, which unfortunately doesn't age that well. So I'm a little bit curious of how this is going to age and whether or not, like, you know, the, the, the leaves of the tree and, like, the actual water itself, how that part is going to mainly age and if that's going to, like, reveal the scar and stuff. You may have to just get this touched up once in a while. But other than that, this is great. Like, I like the tattoo design. Oh, this one's cool. You can still kind of see the scars, but, like, if you look into it. I like this design. This is cute. Alright, so this is from a thigh donor uh, site. I like this one. This is a really good, like, yeah, when it's like a thigh tattoo, it's really easy just to, like, put something big on there to cover it up. I like this tattoo. The only critiques that I have, because I'm very picky with proportions, and you'll understand once I explain, the beard. The tip of the beard, it's like shifted to the side. If his head is turning like this, the tip of the beard would be underneath his chin, you know what I mean? But instead, it's still over here when he's looking this way. So it's a little unproportionate of what reality is and stuff like that. Even if his hand's right here, that's not going to push the beard. His hand's going to be in front of the beard. But maybe the artist was like afraid that the hand was going to get lost in the beard. Like, I don't know, the detail. And another thing that I don't like is the extreme dark shading on the cheeks and the fingertips. Maybe that was just our, like an artist's choice for like healing, um, because when a tattoo heals, obviously color's gonna be lost and stuff like that. So I do know some artists 
make their tattoos a little bit darker than what it's actually going to be, especially with black areas, in order for it to when it heals, it's actual the actual shading that the individual wants. All in all, though, this is a really great tattoo. This is nice. The only scar that you see is right along the wrist. Like, yes, this is technically called like a blackout tattoo because it's like a lot of black within one area. But it's like, I don't know, I think, like, I like the floral blackouts. I think that's what I'm getting at. Like, a bunch of random lines, which, yes, all tattoos technically are. Um, I just, I just don't understand, personally, for me. But, like, if it's floral and stuff like that, I kind of like that. So, yeah, this one's cool. This one is a nice one. Oh, this is really cool. This is, like, a Japanese traditional look. He had a really good artist. This looks really good. Uh, proportions are nice with like the head of the fish to the tail. This is full-on traditional Japanese. And I like how he did a sleeve rather than just like a form of a koi fish. I feel like with something like this you do actually have to have like a full-on design sleeve theme with it. But yeah, this is great. But also like doing a full sleeve, it also helps with making your arm look normal proportions because obviously like I said with the donut site on the forearm it's gonna look like a big chunk of your arm is off because it kinda is and yeah so it's like your proportions of your body is gonna be looking a little bit strange but once you cover it up with a bunch of ink and you match it with like the other parts of your ink on your skin it kinda makes your arm look more proportionate to each other especially like with the artists that you have the artist obviously had to think a little bit more with the koi fish on the forearm to make it look proportionate with the other koi fish and stuff like that. The artist really thought really good with this and like the guy himself, uh, Shane, great concept for a tattoo. That was great. Good job with that. Oh, and that was the last one featured on this page. So what I've gained from uh, these ones featured on this page is that to cover up those scars, you mainly want to do like blackout kind of tattoos and like extremely detailed tattoos or like nature looking. It depends on your scar. Um, how much it healed and stuff like that. Personally, for me, I am going to get phalloplasty. I don't know if I'm going to do the forearm and the thigh or both thighs. I'm not really sure yet with that. But it's like, I have a few ideas to cover up for my forearm section if I do get it. It's either I'm going to do like a Grateful Dead tattoo there or a like nature scene kind of thing with train tracks. I might. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still like up on the air of like what design to get if I do choose my form as the donut site. Anyways, I hope you guys like this uh, video. If you guys want me to react to more phalloplasty scar uh, tattoo cover-ups, definitely comment that down below because I could search them on Reddit, on Pinterest, and stuff like that. There's obviously a lot more that you can do uh, to cover up your trans scars. Give this video a like. Check out the statistics. If you find yourself watching multiple my videos, might as well subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell down below so you get notifications whenever I upload a video. And I'll see you guys next time.